Hey guys, uh, good to be here. We're gonna start in a few seconds. Let's wait for Will to uh, pop on. Will, are you here? Do we have a Will in the house? Right. Uh, okay, there's Will. Hey, Will. Hey, Namar. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, I realized I need to unmute you. Yeah. So we have a bunch of guys on the line, and uh, it's uh, very good to be back. Very good to uh, throw yet another webinar. It's been a few uh, crazy months, uh, I'm sure, for everybody as well. Yeah, exactly. And uh, good to be back. So. Today we're going to talk about build your agency. We're going to cover some of those things that uh, majority of us faced, uh, facing, will face. And before we start, I just want to thank Ellie. She's with us, one of the panelists. Uh, she um, helped us put this together. Yes. Ellie from our marketing team. Kudos. Thanks. Good job. Presentation is awesome. And I can't wait to go through it. So uh, I'm Itamar. I'm um, running a serial reseller for the past eight nine years almost wow it's uh, been a while um and i have will with me will is uh seven years with the company yeah started seven years ago huh junior account manager and now you're head of accounts so, yeah how yeah. that happen <laughs> <laughs> just time flies right right happens. yeah so you've seen it all right you've seen the, the 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 small agencies become huge the big agencies making mistakes like we've learned from everything we've, we've learned from everybody exactly. um, i've been i've been in 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 digital marketing and in uh, uh, software development for whew, since i remember myself um 20 years yeah. about and uh, yeah i'm from israel originally i moved to the philippines our headquarters are in the philippines in manila and I moved here 11 years ago, never looked, looked back. So great to be here and great to uh, run an awesome team that helped a lot of agencies build themselves up. So just a reminder, um, let's use the Q&A feature to ask questions. You can load up the questions as we go. If you have questions, we'll uh, answer them later on. Uh, towards the end, for me, the, the fun part is the Q&A because this is where you can really uh, dive deep and ask whatever is on your mind okay so what are we going to cover will yeah so uh, to, to start things off it's always good to start from the beginning and we're going to reflect a bit on the story of seo reseller and how we grew over the years uh, especially with all the partners that we've worked with so we'll start there second we'll talk about the agency profiles that we interact with the most. So we've trimmed that down and we'll show you uh, what they look like, what challenges they face, and we'll talk about a few solutions that are tied to that. And then lastly, just for the remainder of the webinar, we'll go over a framework to simplify everything. And that's us talking about people, process, and technology. Yeah. And that's pretty the, much it. The thing that binds it all, it's people, process, and technology. If you could boil it down to three things. Yeah. In business, uh, it's people, process, and technology. So we'll just start about ourselves. Like I said, I moved here 11 years ago um, and launched uh, a series seller circa 2001. Um, built the agency dashboard, the first uh, agency dashboard 2014. It yeah. was just a need to help people outsource, but I realized that we can streamline things, build the dashboard, started gaining momentum, getting uh, agencies, helped hundreds of agencies, thousands of campaigns, and uh, um, coming to 2020, the year that uh, you know changed it all, <laughs> we revamped our offices in Manila. Beautiful offices that are now uh, are empty. We're working from home. Uh, yet the show uh, never stops. Show must go on. So we're still doing uh, kicking ass, doing what we're doing best. Right. So yeah, this is me at the empty office just like the day after we locked it this is just half of the office but uh yeah our our office uh your office right so you you were going in you were you were you were going in um to take care of the plants right to order Those first the initial plants. days yes, yes. <laughs> you were the only one who could go to the office so this is where i took the photo yeah that was under like strict quarantine um 
So yeah, but enough about us. Let's talk about you guys. So um, let's talk about where are you right now. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Will, we've seen around three types of uh, agencies, agency owners, agencies, and they all have their pain points. Yep. And they all have their kind of uh, life cycle. And uh, we broke it down to these three. Yeah. So, all right, so tell us a bit about those guys. Well, we chose these three um, because there's a connection between the three of them. They're, you can look at them as stages as well. Uh, and these are the three that mostly tap into that mostly. Uh, so let's start off with the starter. Yeah. And most agencies, well, they're not agencies at this point. They're guys that are or professionals that have uh, decided to put up shop or decided to focus um, some of them also maybe like in the most recent months have decided, you know, uh, might need to figure out another way to make money. And so they've gone online. They've got experience in one form or another with either web design or social media. Uh, you know, Itamar, now how easy it is nowadays compared to like when everybody got yeah. started. Uh, yeah, we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, uh, that's that's the easy entry point. The web design and, the, and, and social media now uh, with all the CMSs with Wix and do the mobile and Weebly. It's very easy to start off there. And then the question is, how do you scale up? I think I started as a, what I call a technician. I started as a programmer, a web developer. And yeah, you start, you have to start somewhere. The question is, what are your blind spots? What keeps you at the starter level? And we've seen a lot of those. Mm -hmm. So you, you told me earlier about um, a starting uh, agency or a starting venture. And these guys are, are into... Uh, they're they're in a church, right? They're part oh, yeah. of a church, and yeah. they decided to go out and, in Georgia. Yeah, and build build something for the community and help the community. I think a lot of guys are realizing it's digital first. It's digital first world. Yeah, and if we kind of turned an eye until now, now you can't turn an eye anymore, and um, it's a great space to be in. But yeah, the starters they do have their pain points, and you have uh, uh, met them all and talked about those <laughs> issues. Can you run down through those issues? Sure, sure. The three of them that we have here is, is time management. Um, and a good example for that is, again, like if they're actually working, but they need the extra hours, of course, you know, for, for their reasons, um, they're going to have to decide because once the day ends, they've got an extra four hours. So this is them focusing on finding a client and then holding on to them. But then, yeah. you know, when things start to get bigger and now they have to choose and it's something that they wish it's, for, it's a they'll get to anyway. It's the leap yep. that's hard to take. I know it from, from myself from years ago. Yeah. Are uh, you trying to burn, you know, um, the midnight oil, but uh, there's uh, just as much as you can do. So time management in general, time management is important. I think uh, some of these guys are afraid to take the leap. And I think that might be one of the, the blind spots or one of the, the turning points, the tipping points mm -hmm. uh, for some of you, but you have to be calculated about it, of course. Exactly. What else? Um, do we have in that category it goes into next sales versus marketing or 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 investing in inbound or going straight uh and, and hitting it with outbound um some of these guys come in with with good expertise and know what to do with their own with their own websites right and so when they'll talk to us they'll ask us for advice just how can they bring up traffic and then you have some guys who are who've got good personalities good character so they're they're uh they're suitable salesmen and so but eventually it comes to a point like, which one do I choose? Yeah. Which one do I start to focus on? Which leads into the third one and also hits on all three. It's, it's financially, uh, when I make these moves, I've got to choose where I'm putting it because I, I, I don't have enough capital to like really go for everything. So what do I focus on? So right. that's basically a starter. Yeah. And some of these guys, you've seen them staying there for a year, two, three, four, forever, or until they give up because they're not addressing those pain points. Yeah. Um, I think finances are a big one, especially if you're working a day job and then you're starting an agency or you're starting a, a venture. Um, it's that leap because if you, if you can see the numbers there, guys, it's like um, making the 3K to 15K uh, a month if you're if you're getting um, a bunch of clients and and when do you take the leap well what do you outsource what do you keep in-house sometimes right. we, you know we have those guys that are are, are making three thousand because they're just beginners 
and they're thinking, okay, I'm going to spend a thousand and I'm left with 2000. That sucks. So I might as well do all the work myself. I do all the account management myself, you know, service delivery account management, customer support account, yeah. account management, basically, um, because I want to be left with that um, sweet 2K. But that's not scalable. And this is sometimes where they get really stuck there and they're just the servant of that one, two clients for a long time. Mm -hmm. What they don't realize is that when you decide to strategically um, find where you can invest that money, whether in account management or service delivery, um, 3K, sp spending 1K to do 3K doesn't sound uh, too hot, but when it's spending 10K to make 30K, you're left with a pretty uh, uh, good gross margin. So it's really about taking a bit of a leap of faith there, yeah. whether it's uh, quitting the day job or whether it's investing the, the capital, the money into getting help uh, to become the next level specialized. So what's the specialized besides a good bike uh, brand that I really like? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> the leap, uh, that's I think the most appropriate term um, because it's a choice. You, you're going to end up having to make decisions about what you can or cannot do. So when they reach the specialized stage, they, they have pretty much decided that, okay, this is where I'm spending my time. And I know that I'm, good at, I'm better at sales or I'm better at accounts or I can really invest more in marketing. And then they decide to choose. They'll focus on either one platform uh, and go for it. So what they'll see is, and this takes, this takes a good number of years too. Um, some people have figured it out right off the bat, which is great. Um, Rare, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> Rare, they, came, they, they came from their background, they came from an agency or they came with the disciplines because uh, they've been a sales person or account manager, but there are no shortcuts. That's what I want to say. Like as we go up uh, the scale, mm -hmm. some people are, you know, there's so many courses out there that they're promising you the world and then they just, you know, the course ends and then what? Uh, so they took your money and then what? Um, someone is, told me it's like uh, they're, they're selling you shovels. They're, they're, they're telling you, hey, there's gold somewhere. Go, go dig now. So, but, but that's true. You have, to, you have to work hard. Some of the guys that are, are in specialized or in enterprise work five to 10 years for that. Yep. It's, uh, there's no shortcuts. If you find shortcuts, email them to us. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> rare. That's what I'm saying. It's the hard work. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. So when you make that choice to make that leap from started to specialized, you put yourself in a position where now it's all about the grit. And the other thing that you, they end up facing is that I'm not alone. Now that I know what I'm good at, I need to find people that can help support me. Yeah. So which leads into the challenges as they're going through this period, they, everything starts to revolve around them. They'll build the business towards what they're good at. So they get the people that will support them. But then they become on the first challenge, which is the dependency on, on the founding team. Uh, some of them are technicians. So they'll That's look for somebody who can help build yeah. everything that, I'm sorry, they look for somebody who can build a vision for them and gun for it, especially the ones that are heavier on the brand. But uh, everything starts to lean on them. Every decision has to pass through their hands or through their eyes and um, that holds things back. Yeah. Uh, next is customer retention. Um, not employees, uh, customer retention. Mm -hmm. Because the initial portfolio that they normally start with, like if they started off with a few first clients in their two years or first year, even oh, the shortest. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're tied at the hip. Right. Like, they're their best and buds. They jump it's... for every phone call, doesn't matter what time it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a symbiotic relationship. So if one gives, the other feels it. So when there's a great change happening on, let's say, the on the agency side, the clients immediately feel the difference. They'll notice that there's a shift in the process, a shift in the way they're talking. And so they also you have to pay attention to that. just pass them on to, to a, like a generic account manager versus the business owner. Everybody wants to talk to the business yeah, owner. Yeah, exactly. But as you grow bigger, you can't do that. It's also the founding team, like the... Uh, the best ones that we've seen are a combination of a technical guy and a salesperson. Yep. Someone's really strong at sales. Someone can really hack it like with, with campaigns and, and, and websites, but um, it's really stuck on them. They're, they're busy doing what they're doing, but they should be focusing on other things. Right. Uh, so yeah, customer retention, recruitment. What about recruitment? Oh, I mean, same. I know what about recruitment. Yeah. This, this, uh, <laughs> find the right guys is tough. Yeah, we we went through that too. Uh, everybody goes. Through everybody, it. right? Yeah, it's so, no secret. but it's at the, the stage you can stick around. Start, that, yeah, the, you know, under promise, over delivers. Yeah, right. So that's exactly what a specialized agency will face in that period. A lot of people problem because because people now are your capital. This is what you're investing and in, growing with. Um, 
So you have to be very, very specific there. Yeah. The next phase, enterprise. We have a, a, a few of those. We have eight digit agencies, a couple of them um, making over 10M. Um, we're not like we're part of their portfolio, right? right? They're huge. They're doing various things. Uh, will not disclose it's their, you know, secret sauce. But, um, but when you're an en enterprise, it's a whole slew of different problems uh, altogether. But yeah, it's challenges. I mean, every stage you have challenges. The, the funny thing is that the challenges for the starters and for the enterprise, when you're the person at the helm, they kind of feel the same. Yeah. You feel like, uh, I can't hack it, like I'm stuck. What am I doing wrong? How can I get to the next level? Again, we talked about people moving faster through the, the, the ladder and moving slower. Every time you solve that blind spot, every time you figure out what you're doing again and again, expecting different results, the second that you get to a tipping point and you act on it, it it's like a door opens, right? So enterprises, yeah. um, bigger problems. We have a couple of companies in, in 500, like year over year, super growth, uh, super sharp, good combinations of salespeople and technical people. Yeah. Um, but the problems are. And you do. Just describe the first one working on the business. Some of them are entrenched and it's, it's, it's a next evolution of dependency on founding team. Mm. Now it's, it's time to let go. You've got the right guys. You've got the departments you need. You've built out the disciplines. Expansion is, is really what's next. So yeah. it ties into the, the other two as well because the big question that enterprise agencies uh, ask themselves all the time and that even their clients ask them is what's next? Where are we yeah. headed to after yeah. this? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we've hit you the... Had, yeah. You had a runway with, with your clients. You had a runway also with your employees. And now, like, what's next? Yeah. Everybody's asking you, pressuring you um, on what's next. So that includes also retention because for as long as you don't have an answer to that question, um, the people that have been in, you know, you've asked to invest their time in and you've invested time yeah. with, trained them and, and kept them. These are the guys that are starting to think about what's next for them. So that's why employee retention is the second Easy issue. Easy to lose large. altitude. Because uh, you get to a certain height and it's, 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 it's easier to, get out, to lose out altitude from that height than from a starter or a specialized when you really st still have the connection with all your clients and all. Yeah, Okay. exactly. Uh, so now we're talking about you guys like what's your strategy for growth if you heard some pain points that you can relate with uh, well you're not alone everybody has those we have those i had those in my various businesses um we're still facing some yep and like we said we're 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 splitting it into people process technology just give us a quick rundown sure so we listed out those three agency profiles specifically because it's tied to this as well when you're starting out as a starter you're mostly trying to figure out how to answer all the hows and whys and what's the steps ones to five, and that's process. What you're trying to figure out is what is my process? And so you have to define what you're selling. Oh, mm -hmm. Sorry, we, we moved forward. Yeah, right. uh, you, yeah, sorry, I told you to cover and then I move forward. But we will start with process. I, I just uh, yeah. closed that. Yeah, and, go, go ahead. Uh, and then on specialized, it's people. Like you said earlier, you were introing it already. Uh, it's about understanding the roles, the, comp the competencies, and the responsibilities of the people that you will need in your organization at that point. By the way, and by lastly, the way, specialized, yeah, yeah. because I, I just want to dive into specialized again. And I think in previous webinars, we always talked about niches and specializing. It's like uh, if you know the Pareto law, uh, it's the 20, 80, 80, 20. I always say that on the 20, you can do another, an extra 20. Like the internet is vast. Uh, SMEs, small, medium enterprises are in hundreds of thousands, uh, if not more out there. And if you want to go into a niche and then pick the specific niche within a niche, you really want to be specialized. Yep. You really want to be known for that agency that does that. That's another breakthrough, I think, versus being um, like a jack of all trades, taking everything that just comes in through the door. Um, and that's for me is specialized. The, the agencies that are more successful from what I've seen are the guys that are doing that. No, that's, that's true. Uh, that could actually be an entire webinar on its own. <laughs> For so, sure. And, and yeah. I know everybody wants to know which niche, which niche, but it's, it's yeah, really yeah. up to you. It's who you feel comfortable with, what's your background, uh, what's in your vicinity. And really, it's a vast topic. Yeah. Right. So let's um, move on. So the last one, technology, that's what an enterprise will face. It's, uh, it's optimizing everything. It's figuring out how to integrate everything that you built together and start to automate 
yeah. uh, and start to decide on really what to start trimming and, and what to start building upon again. So that's technology. Yeah. So, so this is the scale. framework, right? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and that's what you pretty much will see when you reach that stage. So we'll start off first with process. Now, these are action words specifically that I think most of you are facing at this point, And I think it never stops anyways. But I want you guys to see this as a mirror too. We're, we're seeing it from not just uh, your perspective looking at the business, but also looking at your, cl- your, your clients or customers, right? So you have to deliver. Uh, obviously, you made the commitment. There's a mm-hmm. promise that the brand uh, espouses and that needs to be delivered. You have to maintain that remain consistent so the results are there and then obviously to get better results you need to improve so we're going to dive into a bit of the process some of you guys I'm sure uh, some of you have probably spoken to an onboarding specialist or an agency consultant or an account manager and that's normally around the first question so let's show you what it would typically look like I'll show you the the one thing I want to say about process is and it, it pertains to the last one to improve the best process you could have is the process of improving your processes uh, a process is not a one-off and some people go with no processes at all and then they realize you know what the results are always different That's so true. this is our process so now we're looking at it from our, our perspective and telling you how we do stuff um, this could be applied to us this could be applied to you something you build something you have already in-house but this is how it works um, for us it's kind of a rundown yeah and we'll, we'll take us through it sure so uh, as a flow we'll start by defining uh, where things are, especially you. And at the top of that, we refer to partners in SEOreseller.com as anybody um, that's coming to us and wants to engage us and work with us. That's you, a partner. Mm-hmm. Second, when we talk about clients and when they, your clients, and when they enter our system, we refer to them as campaigns, like a marketing campaign. Um, and then to tag them in our, in our systems, we call them by their domains. So we'll always, when we talk about clients, we'll always refer them through domain and then their brand. A project is anything that's attached to a campaign. Uh, it could be SEO, web design, uh, paid media. If you're writing some content, some one-offs there, those are projects. But those are basically for your client under that campaign. Lastly, we group all the work together in a period of 30 days, and these are milestones because it's a collection of all the tasks that we'll be working on in that period. So if you guys have any questions, again, you can fire them on the Q&A. And of course, call us up anytime. I know you've got a rep that's attached to you right now. So feel free to do that as we're going along too. Just a reminder. Sure. So we, yeah, th- th- this goes now to just a bit of a setup. Um, because at the end of the day, we'll talk about the process and, 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 and the people and the technology. Mm-hmm. It starts because we're talking about how, how we work. It starts with setting up a dashboard because the dashboard is your opportunity to, first of all, impress, you know, be technical, be technological and show your potential clients and your clients um, that you can actually support them 24 yep. seven whenever they need to check their rankings, traffic, see if they got leads, yep. um, Google My Business. You have to set up at some sort of a dashboard. Um, when I started with digital marketing, with SEO, it used to be Excel, Excel sheets. Yep. Once a week, once a month, you'll send the client a few Excel sheets and, 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 and that was good enough. Nowadays, it's not good at all. You really have to have something shiny and, and impressive. And, and that's already example, the standard today, yeah. Yeah, it's a standard. And, and for example, setting up a white label dashboard is a good start. Um, so this is this is the setup part of our white label dashboard where you can upload your logo, uh, connect your subdomain, um, and just you know be uh, off the ground running in in five minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Audits. So we're talking about uh, process, right? Um, and we we'll take it from the beginning uh, towards the end. So you start with a prospect or with a lead, yep. and you want to show them something that is a conversation starter. Some people uh, think that the audit is the bill annual, or some people think that the audit might be too simplified. It's really thin, but at the end of the day, the client just wants someone to tell them, hey, I found a few things that I think we should talk about. And, um, and I, I sent you an, an, an example or, or a, a document, or maybe I'll step into your office where you can step into offices nowadays. Yeah. Not, uh, not very common anymore. And, uh, and, and let's go over this document. So, Part of the process is always we start with that. 
we um, there's a process for creating an audit, but now in days of uh, automations and APIs, the audit's being created in two or three minutes, uh, scrapes the websites, checks through different APIs, and sees what are the potential uh, for improvements, and then you have it. Then, then you go with an audit, and you're ready to present. Um, do you have any, you know, uh, uh, gold nuggets about the audits? I know that people are asking about the audits um, quite a bit. Actually, uh, a lot of people, what they do with the audits is they will use it primarily like a before conversation. And yeah. then when they run through their first month, they'll run another audit just to show them like here, compare this to this what progress. it was like. Right. There's yeah. definitely a difference yeah. now, right? And so that's probably the best gold nugget I've heard so far. Using yeah. it okay. as a before so and after tool. The before and after. Because some of those things will be painted red, but they might be... Um, yeah, treat them as opportunities, through. right. Really simple stuff. Simple stuff. But the client, they don't have the time. Um, I guess they're at the part of their business that they know what to deal with and what to not deal with. I mean, if they wanted to sit on it and Google it a bit and figure it out, they could. Mm -hmm. Some people think, oh, I'm going to give them an audit and they're going to do, do, go do it themselves. And you know what? Sure, let them do it themselves. And when they face a, a tougher question, they're going to come to the person that, you know, the purveyor of uh, information. So that's fine as well. Yeah. But the thing is that it's a quick way to start a conversation. And before you move to the next part, um, creating a proposal. There are different proposals, make, proposal makers. Uh, a lot of people are getting stuck at the proposal phase, especially when they start. That's true. Um, they go knock on doors. You know, sometimes if you're a technical person you're, or you're a marketing person, you'll have a relative or a friend or a friend of a friend that'll say, hey, I just started this, you know, Shopify store and I need your help with marketing. Give me a proposal. And then it starts scrambling and then you're stuck. So yep. having something like at the tip of your uh, fingers where you can just uh, push a proposal out. So you're really like a day later, you're, you're, you're impressive, right? You don't take your time. You don't uh, play around. And the proposal, of course, needs to look good. So this is how we do proposals. This is how our partners are doing proposals. It's in the system. It's the proposal maker. The next, uh, that's the next part of the process. And the... Uh... And the thing with proposals, uh, the beauty about like what we set up here was um, some agencies before would, would uh, like years before when they'd ask for a proposal, usually the turnaround times would be like two to four days. Right. And this is the point in a sale when the interest drops like anything. So as quickly as yeah, possible, if you've gotten the client to that rise, yeah. the proposal should yeah. be the one that kicks it up. Yeah. Those are not their the, standard. Yeah, the timer is ticking backwards. To when is the sale and, and time is of an essence, yeah. yeah of course. Um, next phase, intake form. So the client says, you know what? I like the audit. It made sense to me. Um, you sound like a, a fine guy or gal and <laughs> I'm willing to engage. What do we do now? And now you're scrambling again. Okay, I'll drop by the office or I'll pick up the form. We're going to have a conversation. What do you need exactly? And this is where intake forms or briefs, um, creative agencies that we call briefs, uh, would come in handy. It's so important to stress out the, the intake form or getting the information off the bat because it really sets the tone for how you're going to service your clients. What you don't want is to discover a month or two or three later yeah that you missed a pertinent uh, piece of information or that you didn't get the business 100% right or that you're working on their own wrong products uh, that you're promoting. So the intake forms are, are a crucial part of any, uh, any beginning, like uh, Victory loves preparation. Mm -hmm. And the intake form for me is a preparation. A lot of people are um, not skipping or just uh, discounting that part, just giving, you know, one-liners and, and not really realizing that when you start a campaign, the first week is super critical. The first month right. is, is critical. The, the first two months are critical. The first three yep. months are critical because you're still fine tuning. You're still getting to learn the client. The client gets to learn your processes and how they work with you. Uh, and after three months, when they start seeing results and they start seeing leads and they start seeing rankings, traffic, whatever comes first, um, they go back about, about their business. And and for you, if you don't get to that uh, milestone of three months in and they're super happy, um, you might lose that. We talked about retention of clients, retention of campaigns. You might lose that client. This is why doing it right to begin with is super important and, and going, uh, collecting the intake forms, taking the time to interview, to understand, to ask questions, super important. Um, 
yeah, that's definitely that's the index forms. And of course, we have them in our dashboard. So you can see SEO, PPC, content marketing intake forms, just sending them to the clients. You can just imagine also how, how much time it saves uh, as part of the process. Everything's being collected, everything is being presented from one system. And again, it's not necessarily just promoting, of course, we're here. Um, talking to you about SEO reseller. I don't want it to be a sell, sell, sell webinar. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, hey, there are problems out there. There are solutions out there. Find the best solution for you. Um, there are proposal makers out there. There are like intake forms. You can use Google Sheets. You can use type form. It doesn't matter, but you need to have that process. Otherwise, uh, onboarding a client will just be such a drag. Um, and, and, and you will feel it and the client will feel it. Right. So, I I, yeah. I did want to highlight one one more thing when it comes to intake forms. Uh, it's also a tool for building the relationship because early on in the start of a relationship, like against that timeline, let's say of three months, and you're starting off, and this is the very first campaign or or project that you're running with your client. If you want to display active listening, and if you're not used to taking in questions, and and uh, what it does is you'll end up with a conversation with a client. Like, great, you sold me. Uh, Definitely want to do it. I don't want to work on all these improvements. So what's next? And if there's no intake process in place and you just take their money and start running, there's nothing for them to base on. There's nothing to look yeah. forward to in the next three months. There's no yeah. anchor. And that's what this start intake running, form does. Running, we just do it ad hoc-ish or email, back and forth emails. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's kind of and an then, ultimate source of truth, um, the intake form. And it's the who asks questions first. It's on your side with the intake forms or you'll end up with clients firing questions left and right about where everything is at yeah. because there was nothing to hold them to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we actually, we see, uh, we see some of the poll results. Um, so the guys that are starting a new business are 69% of our attendees and then 15% uh, agency with one less than one year experience and agency with more than three years experience. Um, Majority of issues, guys, are 23% issues with scaling, 31% lack of resources. So you guys are probably burning the midnight oil. 31% lack in experience in marketing campaigns. Um, that's fine. That's understandable. Mm -hmm. This is where you have to, there are no shortcuts. You have to learn as much as you can, but also learn who can, who can be the shortcut for you. Um, maintaining profitability is still not a problem and no stable cash flow, uh, 46%. That's, uh, that's a lot of everybody's problems nowadays. Yep. Uh, hiring people who are fit for the job, 15%. Client retention, 15%. Uh, consistency in work delivery, 15%. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. 69% uh, only the basics of SEO. 15% uh, have background in SEO and 15 don't have background in SEO. Okay. So uh, what's the next one? I'll end the poll and we can continue to the next one. Keyword tracking. So yeah, started running the campaign and now, now, now you're in debt because someone gave you their money and what they're expecting are results. So it's a fair trade. Um, it really starts by seeing where they are ranking currently. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if the, if the niche is not too competitive and the geolocation is, uh, is not too central, just implementing on page, just putting a bunch of content out there will will already rank the the, the site. So, so it's very important to know where you started. Um, some people wait with it a bit, uh, and then they can't realize the the gains in, in in the eyes of the clients. What you're seeing here is our keyword tracking tool. We have two ways to go uh, about uh, yep. working with us. By the way, one is like do it yourself, where you have the agency pro tools, you have the subscription, you can add campaigns, you can add quick keywords, you can create your own reports, or they're done for you, like the managed campaigns. When you buy an SEO campaign from from us, and our guys are doing everything, you need to just maintain the relationship with the client, come with the reports, come with the audits, come with the um, end of month executive report, and uh, collect month over month. So. Keyword tracking, super important. Uh, uh, this is actually the name of the game, right? It starts with the keywords. We want to say it's not just keywords, not just traffic, it's conversion. At the end of the day, uh, mm -hmm. you guys Ultimate, are yeah. entrepreneurs. Yeah, you're, you're entrepreneurs. You can just talk about keywords all day, but if there's no money pumping in, if there's no money to uh, uh, pay the rent, uh, it's a problem. But, but keywords is kind of the middle of the funnel. This is what we're selling. This is what we're working on. So it's important to track, goes without saying. Exactly. Reporting, 
We talked about dashboards. Uh, we talked about uh, transparency. It doesn't matter which dashboard, what dashboard. Some people even go Data Studio. Uh, some people use different um, vendors at the end of the day, having a dashboard that shows the client real time. Sometimes it's just the mom and pop shop. These guys don't have time to go into fancy dashboards, to be honest. Sometimes it's a person that runs the marketing for a small um, enterprise and they want to show the owner, this is what's happening. I made the right choice. I, I chose the right person. Look, they have a nice looking, um, even if it's just for show, look, they have a nice looking technology right there. Um, it's kind of a, a proof of concept. You are the, you are the agency of choice for them. I mean, not just a person who sends Excel sheets and, 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 and Word documents. So the campaign overview will display ranking summary, traffic sources, um, recent activities. We have uh, a few other dashboards. You can see there, um, GMB, Google My Business. We have a reputation management uh, tool, part of the agency tools, yeah. uh, analytics, um, and some other. You see call tracking there. That's still not released. That's uh, soon to be released. We have a few uh, surprises up our sleeves for the dashboard. But the dashboard is pretty awesome and does the work showing what's up to you and to your clients. If you have employees, actually you can, you can create employee accounts and let your employees or account managers or your virtual assistants uh, run the show as well. And uh, yeah, executive reports. These are the, this is, this is yeah, the, the end of the month. Job, right. Yeah. Because uh, um, on executive reports, we, we ha you can pretty much schedule them if the campaigns are managed from our side. And so, you'll get walked through by an account manager that's working with you. We'll go through that later. But when your executive reports come out, it's a summarized view of all the results that you were, that you were able to achieve within that one month. Um, aside from the reports that we typically work on, especially on your first month, if you're mostly doing on page and you're integrating as many tools to attach to the dashboard, this is, this is what will tell you and your client whether or not you're on to the next month. Um, but it also tells you what you're going to have to do to move forward as well. So some strategy conversations need to happen. So one of my biggest advice is before you engage the client and you've, once you understand the momentum and the strategy that you're pushing them towards, uh, engage with uh, an expert on your side or an account manager on our side to see like, okay, what will the next few months look like and what can we project to? Yeah, and it's, uh, that's this tool. It's, it's, very, it's very important to have those uh, business reviews, let's call them on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And not always things are going to go according to plan, but this is where you meet. First of all, you set the stage, you explain what's happening, you explain whether it's great or whether it's not so great, but you explain that next month this and that is going to happen to make sure that uh, we, are, we are on track. And the executive reports uh, are a great tool uh, to show that. Um, so it's a monthly report. And this is just a glimpse. It's, it's uh, much more elaborate than this. You can Another also the, uh, oh, sorry. Do you have anything uh, to add on the reports? Yeah, uh, aside from it being monthly, you can actually generate it uh, any at any given time. Yeah, yeah if you we'll want to backtrack a few months ago. Yeah, we'll see it. Sometimes clients will ask, hey, show me how we, we, we were when we started legit requests. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of this uh, is possible and your account manager an account manager could help you. Cycles, this is, a, this is a tricky part. It's very important to cover. People um, might have heard of cycles or not have heard of cycles. And um, why do we have cycles, Will? Sure. Uh, this one, I definitely uh, sourced from the accounts team. I, I wanted to ask them if there was anything that would be very important for us to communicate, mm -hmm. especially with guys who are starting out for the first time, what would really help? Work cycles. Understanding our work cycles would be a big help. Uh, what it does, and before I describe the three lines there, is it allows you to plot when you will start to receive payments and when campaigns start. I know a client would have paid you in the week, and what anybody would expect is as soon as I paid you, the work should start. start. Right. Right. But if you're growing to become specialized and enterprise, you'll end up with at some day, you'll reach 100 clients. And if every day was a day where you're supposed to be receiving payment, it gets harder to track. So the work cycles allow us to ban balance out the work schedules and when payments come through. Also reporting. So those are the three. So a work cycle is 30 days long. And when we attach your client's work uh, to a campaign, 
we put it inside a cycle. So it either starts on the first of the month or the second half, which is the 15th. So that's why we have two cycles. Mm -hmm. And depending on where you're starting, so if let's say, just as example, you got payment in on the 5th, uh, now it becomes a decision where, okay, I'm five days behind from the first cycle or I could start early for the second. This is where operations hate on you guys because you're always trying to convince them to get uh, campaigns to start like ASAP. So there's no, yeah. like, it's, it's not that rigid, mm -hmm. but the reasoning behind starting on the first or on the 15th, let's say business will always report their finances on them on a fiscal, like monthly basis. And they know how much money they made. They know that they started at the beginning of January and ended at the end of January. Uh, same goes for their marketing spend. So you don't want it to be sporadic. You don't want it to be all over the map. You want them to start at the first and finish at, at the first. Yep. Uh, same for the 15th. So if they wanted to start in the middle of the month, at least you have a very well-defined um, start and stop date. More than that, uh, we always say SEO is a momentum-driven um, initiative because if you're taking the foot off the pedal, if you're not building the links or writing the content, your competitors or the, the competitors are. Yeah. So you're kind of putting them on a cadence so from the first to the first, from the first to the first. Um, so they don't play around with it. Uh, so some of you are taking uh, clients under contracts, some of you on their retainers with no contracts. It's important to get to a point when I, they understand that um, the work starts on the first, the work starts on the 15th and um, they need to be on that bandwagon. So there is flexibility there. Mm -hmm. Our operations uh, guys are, are pretty flexible, but also we want to make sure that when we start, we can finish and we can finish on time because it's your um, you know, uh, credibility on the line and right. ours, of course, but you're first, you're, you're, you're facing, you're fronting, um, the clients, uh, anything else on the work cycles. And by the way, I'll remind you guys, I'm seeing already questions piling up. Um, what do we have? Yeah, we have a good amount of questions. Yeah. Uh, go to the Q and a drop your questions. We'll answer them later. Um, people, let's talk about people. So with people, uh, reaching that specialized stage it really becomes a, like a mirror when you're recruiting you're also trying to draw in clients and you're also trying to find the right people to join the organization or your company or your brand and then it's about keeping them and and training them and upskilling them and or educating what they the have. clients right right so, on the clients too twofold. yeah this one i'll share a bit of my story uh, uh the before i started in seo reseller i once upon a time tried to put up my own web design company the first thing I did because I worked for a web design company was because I thought companies needed people. So right off the bat, with the capital I had, I invested in people. I hired six to seven developers. The highest I ever got was about nine people. I didn't last two years. I went one year and six months. So I went straight for it. And what if I, if, if I look back, what I could have done first was figured out, like as a starter, what was I good at? What about the choice I had to make first? And now I had to focus on people that, you know, uh, I had to put my, I had to train had them. To complete you. Yes. <laughs> I, yeah, I have to fill in those holes, which I should have grown and, and yeah. put some grit first. Then I can pass on. Um, also pace also. yourself. I think, I think people are getting a bit uh, overzealous sometimes um, when they come across capital or, um, yeah, or, or when they want to grow. It, it's really pacing yourself and, and running. To totally different topic, uh, running on a forecast, on a budget, running uh -huh. a PNL. Some of you guys are just starting your digital uh, adventure, but you're coming from corporate, you're coming from roles when you were very much exposed to PNLs, right. to, um, to budgets and to forecasts. Same for a small business, same, same. Um, pace yourselves. So, onboarding specialist, Will. Tell us mm -hmm. about uh, the onboarding specialist, Will, yeah. So we talked about people because, again, like in my story, uh, if I had known there was a company at the time, well, actually at the time, there were few and far between. Um, yep. But what we offer here is that you don't have to build that team out, especially for you starters. We've, we've got about three roles we'd like to share with you. And the first one, and I'm sure you've interacted once you've already gone past your second day with us. Um, that would be an onboarding specialist. Uh, we also refer to the the more senior ones, uh, uh, key accounts, account managers, but an onboarding specialist, their, their role is to be the first touch with you. Now, like it says here, they're not your customer provider. Of course, 
they're customer centric. That's a given, right? For everybody. But what they'll do is help you understand better what your client's needs are and against the services that we could potentially provide. And of course, ultimately see if there's a specific way for us to work together. Um, these are the guys that will assist you with the audits. They're the ones that can point you out to which services would make the most sense, not just with us, but your overall strategy um, and try to understand what, what type of arsenal you're already offering. So that's what their role is. Is, and these are the first people you'll be speaking with in your first 30 days. Um, aside from that, these are the guys you'll ask questions with, especially when it comes to the dashboard and, and how to navigate it and what tools to best use at, what, at, at the, these stages. But ultimately, your relationship will end uh, in a way uh, and progress to a different role when, it, when your first campaign is launched. And so this leads to an account manager. An account manager is similar to an onboarding specialist, but they're with you for, well, hopefully the long term. And what they're going to do is help you set up the first campaign uh, and, and be your go-to guy or girl. And they're going to be acting as project coordinators on our side. Of course, they'll advise you. Uh, the bonus thing about working with an account manager is they've got the experience of working, well, I was one, so working with other agencies and be able to provide you with feedback They've got insights from um, other agencies that did it right. Uh, and of course, with keeping right. confidentiality. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, they're, 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 they're well versed. You know, they're, they're great, nice people, and uh, they'll, they'll go out of their way to help, of course, yeah. with keeping confidentiality of our various agencies. I, I think something that's unique to them um, is that. Uh, they they are pseudo project managers and we have actually put them through training the departments you see on the right an account manager would have at some point at least been inside the training modules of either of these so uh, eventually because of their client facing potential they are converted into account managers um, but that's the role they have and that's to help you manage your projects on our side while well, you can focus on your end and take care of your clients by managing communications with them, delivery ultimately. Uh, and so that's an account manager. The, the last role we'd like to share with you is uh, a web project manager. Uh, what's different here is that if you started off with us and let's say as a starter, you, you, you've been using, let's say Facebook uh, as your uh, as pretty much where all your business happens and you've decided that you need to put up a website and an onboarding specialist will now attach you to a web project manager a web project manager of course will intake scope so it's very one to how uh, it's about completing the project within the deadline and the scope that was provided so they'll help you quote they'll help you set timelines also set expectations um, and on their end, they'll assign the work pretty much to the developers and designers that are required to complete that specific project. Although we make it easy because um, you'll notice that if you've gone through the store, our web packages are sort of categorized already. Uh, if they tend to do, they tend to go custom, don't worry, the web project manager is also able to do that. They'll quote it as well. Uh, but yeah, to sum it up, they manage the entire life cycle of your web projects from start to finish. I'll say that when you look at at these structures, this is just the structure of, of a growing agency, uh, whether it's uh, in-house, outsourced, or uh, a hybrid model, it's up to you to decide where do you put your eggs, all in one basket, in different baskets, it's, it's really up to you, but this is where you strive to, to get. Now, the example for, for, for example, the, the web project managers, a lot of people are coming from, okay, I'll just spend day and night to build that website for a client because I just, you know, I'm just starting. I won't char charge them uh, too much yeah. um, because, you know, I don't have much to show yet. Uh, and I'll, I'll charge them, I don't know, a thousand dollars and I'm going to pay a vendor or a freelancer uh, 200, 300, dollars. And there's not much left for me, but think about the delivery. Think back that you can actually deliver faster. Uh, it can deliver on point. You can deliver, let's say, a WordPress site with all the plugins already licensed, installed, while your time is being spent on seeking more clients. So this is where you have to really realize where do I put my time? Do I become, do I become all these guys? Do I hire some of the guys? Do I want to bring a partner, uh, like mm -hmm. a real life partner, business partner that does some of these things? Or do I want to outsource it and really up 
to you, up to your capital, up to how much you want to reinvest from the money you're making or money you're charging. Um, so right. I, I think uh, this covers our, our um, people part and we're up to technology now. This one I'll, leave, uh, I'll throw back to you. Because <laughs> I'm a programmer. <laughs> yeah. <Sure. laughs> so, of course, uh, like I described in the beginning, things used to be Excel sheets and, and emails, and that was at the simple days. Uh, we didn't have smartphones, we had dumb phones, and everything was very quiet and nice. Yeah. Uh, well, but okay. now there's so many, right? And, and, and they're coming with, oh, this, this uh, agency brought me those type of reports and that agency gave me those types of dashboards. And now we have to start tracing, tracing all those things uh, to be at the, the, the you know, top of your game, yeah. uh, creating the right um, technology or the, the right technology stack or marketing stack, uh, knowing how to track, knowing how to report. So we talked about our SEO dashboard, for example. This is something that's pretty much uh, a must when you're reporting traffic and, and rankings, a uh, combination of analytics and, and rankings based on location yeah. uh, are very important. Um, I'm sure you've seen it in the dashboard. If you haven't, uh, go check it out. Google My Business, uh, everything is becoming local. Google is uh, really making a huge move on Google My Business. Um, trying to make it front and center, especially on mobile. Your clients, potential clients, could see how many people uh, sought them on the maps yep. or just on an organic search, how many people looked for directions, how many people um, actually showed up. Uh, and that's the GMB. And later on, reporting. How do you actually um, report of, on all of those um, and, and for that you need some sort of a report builder so you don't spend even you know um, um, uh, five minutes on sitting and collating and collecting and doing the copy paste and uh, uh, you know screenshots and whatnot mm -hmm. so a report builder is also a critical uh, part of a technology stack uh, so again different parts of the journey would require different uh, tools um, and it's really up to you the next one is an interesting one, and uh, it's one that's a uh, very, you know, it's very tricky not to overpromise because yeah. at the end of the day, people see Lead Finder and like, oh, great, you're gonna give me all my leads. I'm just gonna pay $99 for the tool, and I'm gonna make a million uh, tomorrow. And I'm like, that, that, that's not how it works. Like all the guys that we know that really um, made it, they really hit, hit the, 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 the payments. They really went out there and, and, and went door to door or went to their network or went to events or cold called or cold emailed. What the lead finder does for you is just to take a location and to take um, an industry and to find your websites, businesses with contacts, emails, with phone numbers and allow you to later on put them in a spare we'll in a second. Yeah. If you, it's, Clicking a few buttons and campaigns are going to start landing at your uh, lap. That's not going to happen. So please do not use the tool. Please do not pay for the tool. There's no huge success. There's no great success without uh, hard work, in my opinion. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Uh, maybe you have different examples. And of course, you know, you look at uh, those courses and you look on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. Everybody just wants to show you how, how right. easy it is for them uh, to win and I, I, I call bollocks, but yeah. just, this is just me. So the lead finder is another tool in your, in your arsenal to make sure that you start exposing to something that again would be done uh, manually before. Yeah. Let's start seeking all the dentists around me. Let's find all the home services providers around me. I'll pick up the phone and I'll say, hey, I want to drop by. I have an audit. I want to talk to you about your website. The lead finder does that for you in, in a minute or two. So that's something yep. to, check, uh, to check out. Later on, there's a CRM. So keeping things uh, tidier uh, versus just uh, some people work off of their mailbox becomes uh, messy. And uh, some people don't realize that the leads that you talked to a year ago might be relevant today. Yep. So uh, a central location to, to collate and to, to store all those leads and, 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 and update what's up, at which, which stage they are, what's their status, um, is also important. We have a, a, a mini CRM in the dashboard that connects to the audit, uh, the website audit that connects to the lead finder. Mm -hmm. um, and it also connects to marketing automation. Again, I would say 
marketing automation, it, it's a huge um, scope on its own. So this is something you really have to dive into. There's, again, no shortcuts. The fact that you have a lead finder and you can find dozens of uh, businesses and get their contact details and you can drop them into a CRM and send them an email doesn't mean a lot yet. If you don't follow up, if you don't pick up the phone, if you don't go visit, uh, if you don't do or go the extra mile, I'll give you an example. We have some templates in our marketing automation and because um, I have visibility to the software, I see everybody uses, reuses the same templates and just sends them. Um, and the, the guys that, uh, and I, this is not proven, but the guys that I feel will be more successful are the guys that are writing their own templates. Right. And they're, you know, they're, they're witty and they're making sense and they're getting you to open. So again, whoever walks the extra mile will get that extra mile in returns with, uh, with interest. Whoever does the, you know, the inch expecting a mile won't work. But again, if you want to go and do it, you have, you have those tools, you have an arsenal. Uh, a toolbox and those things are available everywhere right. just that we put put them all together this is part of the technology where you say how do i start what do i do well you have to do all of it um and um you have to do it you know in droves like you have to do a lot of it so again i think this is the hardest part for a starting business is how to get those leads how to interact with them Today's world is very saturated with digital messages, with yeah. emails, with instant messages. It cannot be just that. You have to put an edge on it. The edge should be you. The edge is not an email. The edge is not the fact that I have your phone number or your email. The edge is me. What's your edge? Are you targeting a niche? Are you an expert in a niche? Are you from the neighborhood? Are you from the community? You have to find that. Don't use templates. Uh, um, go the extra mile. It will be worth it. Um, Actually, so, Itamar, yeah. I, I, I wanted to share this with everyone and you too, because I, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but when, when I first started out here, like you said, it was mostly spreadsheets. So there was no dashboard. I came in 2013. You built the dashboard 2014. So we went through the training and then so did the initial partners. But the guys that started out with us, we were looking at Excel sheets of leads. And, and when we did proposals, we were, we were, yeah. we, I, I, I'd been on Word and export as a PDF and it breaks and then you need to, yeah, we bought the PDF editor because they wanted their logo on yeah. top of it. And yeah, the good old days. So, so, so much of this has evolved. And, and, and what I have to say is because uh, it takes really the core, the, the core elements in a process, especially when you're starting out as an agency. Yeah. And it, it, it puts these tools in front of you to allow you to decide like, okay, what direction am I taking? Like we said earlier, if I'm going to be a salesperson uh, in this company, if I'm going to be the accounts manager or I'm going to be the marketing, head of marketing in, in this role that I'm going to start off with, you can choose any of these. Again, it's your choice. Same thing as, as, as Edomar yeah. said. But when I used to see the guys used to, that used to grind and, and get the enterprise today where they are now, they didn't have any of these. Mm -hmm. And so they did everything from scratch. They made mistakes. But then when we started to roll these out and then other uh, company started to set the standards too. Um, it's true what Edomar, everything that Edomar is saying. Uh, the beauty of it really comes from the choices you're going to make and the grit that you need to apply to it. We're just right. here really to help. Yeah, and, and, and the tools are just a sweetener, they're not the meal. And mm -hmm. to eat the meal, you need to prepare the meal. So the question is where are you in six months? Uh, you have to set the goal, you have to know what you're willing to invest, what you're not willing to invest. And when I'm saying investment, I'm not necessarily t talking money or not just money. I'm talking about what are you going to put forward right. Time, to make sure learning, that you're successful. Yeah. yeah, learning or yeah, just the grit, just the grit of, of picking up the phone, just the grit of reaching out to your network, just the grit of going to events if you can um, to, uh, well, not shake hands, you need I don't know, the elbow bump or whatever it is and, and the business cards. <laughs> Uh, the guys that are making everybody wants to make it, um, yeah. but to make it, you actually, it's a verb. You have to actually make it. Uh, so, what's your goals uh, and where you're at in six months? If you're a starter, are you becoming a, a specialized agency? If you're a specialized agency, are you becoming are you becoming a, um, you know an enterprise anytime soon? It's really those blind spots that you have to figure out. Um, and the tricky part is that uh, they're you know not really seen. This is why they're called blind spots. So if you can get someone to talk to you and tell you where you're blind spots, 
spots are. And you have to make uh, a, an aware decision to work on them day in day out because those blind spots are habits, financial habits, work habits, uh, whatever, you name it. But the second that you overcome them, it's a tipping point. Right. You, might see, you, you might meet a friend that you haven't seen for a few years and back then they used to be a bit lazy and you thought nothing much will come out of them and now they're super successful or they're semi-successful, but you'll see that something in, in, you know, in, their, in, their, in their stature, in, in how they speak, in how they think, mainly in how they think, you know, change your thinking, you'll change your world. Yeah. You'll see in those guys, say, oh, something changed. You learn, you sound different. They got to a, 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 un, unravel a, a blind spot and they got to a tipping point by working on it, like really tipped it hard until, until they got to the next level. So yeah, you have to ask yourself, where am, where am, am I in six months? You have to write it down. Uh, successful people write all the time. This is something I realized. People that um, just uh, leave things to chance uh, we only remember, you know, our less thoughts and things will pop here and there and it's not organized. Write it down. Tell yourself what's your next um, milestone. Uh, repeat it every day. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to give you all the self-help, uh, <laughs> growth. Uh, I love it. Like I, 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 I live for it, but uh, it's everybody's journey. Some people are cynical to it. Some people are following it religiously. Write down your goals, figure out where you're going to be and you'll get there. Um, but you have to put the hard work in. So we have uh, some tips from our team. Um, preparation is always step zero. You have to come prepared. You, uh, like I said before, victory, victory loves preparation. Yep. There's another one I like. Preparation is, uh, oh no, it's luck, but it's <laughs> luck is when uh, preparation and timing meet. Uh, you have to be prepared because if the, if the opportunity came and you're not prepared, you don't have your tools, you don't have your process, you don't have your people, when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. So preparation is always the first step. Be prepared daily, every day. Work on it. Exactly. Uh, the next one is, I guess it's more you will. The booking your next appointment, a bit of a salesperson, account management, uh, state of mind. For me, I'm like, I don't want to book my next appointment. I just want to be behind the screen and program a bit. But uh, yeah, always book your next appointment. What do you say about that, Will? I think the internet's a bit uh, misbehaving on wheels and um, oh yeah, it's Zoom and they're unmuting. No, I sorry, you, I sat on this. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. No, uh, I yeah, well, yeah, it's the, the, always booking your next appointment isn't necessarily sales. I, the what the team's also trying to say. The, yeah. Consistency, consistency I mean, compounds. Yeah. yeah. Consistency compounds, and when it comes to your interactions with your clients, like not every call is a sales call. So right. the reason why you have to set an, an appointment because it's a version of a close. So if you if you feel there's nothing you, you got out of the call, the 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 one thing you should walk away always is a book meeting and another an appointment. When are we going to talk again? Yeah. Keep that cadence going. That's what that yeah. means. So. Yeah, uh, it's easy to give up if things are not going your, your way or you perceive that they're not going your way. And like you said, it's not, not everything is a sales. Uh, for me, a sales call or a sales kind of culmination point is when there's like really fair and square understanding that um, that's the right product and, and, and you're the right client. People that are pushing it and shoving it, like, mm -hmm. uh, shoving a square into a, into a triangle. Uh, whole are just going to face so much friction and so many issues and that's that's a stagnation of its own that's a blind spot of its own but that's a different topic yeah deliver peace of mind not happiness let's let's get to it through this because we will do the q a after and uh um that's my favorite part so deliver peace of mind not happiness sounds kind of a zen uh, sentence will what's that all about well if you're thinking that whenever you interact with a client, the objective is that they walk out of that conversation or that interaction where they're happy. Yeah. Ultimately, after every interaction and you reach that report and everything looks great, you've given them peace of mind. So yeah. it's not about the little moments that you share with them, although it can kill you. It's the little things that do that. But ultimately, the results count, and that's peace of mind. I, I so, say even, if, even if the report is not great, um, peace of mind is saying I'm on it. You know, you always have that friend that you know you can rely on, yeah. you know, that employee, that colleague. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like I know what's up. I'm on it. You don't have to worry about it because I'm getting paid to worry about it. And that's peace of mind. Happiness is just like anecdotal here and there. Oh look, this is great. That is great. Smoke and mirrors uh, yep. often for me. 
so I really am a fan of the peace of mind. Um, solid intake is the foundation. Yeah, we covered that right. um, back and forth. So yeah, it really uh, the foundation of a great campaign. Uh, under promise and over deliver goes without especially saying. with SEO. Especially with SEO. Especially with SEO, you can you're fighting the algorithm, right? One campaign might do great, might, one might one campaign might be a, a struggling campaign, and you cannot forecast that. You can always do your best. You can always learn. You can always adapt. You can always uh, uh, change your methodology. Mm -hmm. But under promise, over deliver works every time. Always check for clarity. Right. Uh, it coincides with a lot of these. It's, it's really about communication. Always check yeah. that the person that you walked away from understood exactly what your message was, uh, especially when it comes to intake. So and in every moment that you interact. Next is be the bearer of good news and bad news. So it goes back to the report example. Yeah. Uh, the end of the day, take ownership. Um, be accountable. We're right behind you. So no worries about that. Yeah. Avoid clients who take 80% of your time. Big one. Big one. Especially for starters, because they have a yeah. client that's like eating their head. It's uh, and 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 they're spreading that that angst all over because they think that's the only that's the client that's the holy grail. That's see, sometimes they chase that 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 one client for so long that they don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. It's like that relationship that you're clinging to, although you know it's not a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes it's okay to know how to not intake them. The greatest thing is not to intake them to begin with, but you'll have to grow that sixth sense, uh, uh, sense for it. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the problematic you, ones. To give you an example of what normally they might say is, uh, no, everything looks great. Guess what? Come on board and guess what? I'll have more, I'll have more for you. Uh, we'll invest more in, in your business and the rest of it. Uh, just yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. The, the, the promise, and this is the, the guy that's mm -hmm. uh, over promise on the deliver as a client. Yeah, yeah. There are, there are many yeah. horror stories. Yeah, book could be written, probably written before. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, Q and A part. Now I need to open the Q and A uh, bits in Zoom, and for some reason it's not um, showing it. So, yeah, uh, Ellie, if you see any Q and As, they'll be great. It's displaying uh, on my side. Is this bank? Uh, so you can start. Yeah. yeah, you can start. I'm not okay. seeing it for some reason. Oh boy, there's a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it opened, it popped. You see it? Yeah, yeah. Um, can the dashboard be customized with our services? Uh, it's a, a good question, Gary. It really depends because our workflows, the, 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 the fact that we can offer peace of mind is because we are working on the workflows on our workflows. Uh, we we test them because we run hundreds of campaigns. We optimize them and say that's what works. Best to resell that. But if comes an agency and they say, listen, I have a, a stable uh, um, amount of clients and these particular activities really work for them, we yeah. can plug it into the store. You'll be the only one that can see uh, those packages, those workflows, and we can replicate them for you. Uh, if really, if you think it's 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 the bomb, right? But I also recommend because you've been there uh, out there for almost a decade doing all these things uh, for hundreds of agencies to re-examine. Sometimes the problem is that you already sold and you're in a contract with a client. So I'd say just to summarize it. It really depends on the. It's only it depends on the volume because if it's uh, to change our operational processes and and the workflows in in the store and in our backend. For something that's being sold once a month, they'll be uh, a bit uh, of a waste. So I recommend looking at the product, uh, discussing it with uh, an onboarding specialist. And if, if there's volume behind it and the, and the operations would make sense, because some people are like, oh, can you write reviews on GMB for me? Like, we, we don't do that. Uh, we don't write reviews. We don't do stuff that's uh, uh, not kosher. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, it really depends. Uh, webinar be recorded. Will a uh, copy be distributed? Sure. Um, it will. Definitely. What would a typical pitch to a client go like? What works in pitching based uh, of experience? Um, will? Yeah. Actually, uh, let's do it in three. So once you've got, you've got a conversation going with a potential client, use the audit, and that should be your first conversation. You'll go over basically what's on the surface. Book the next meeting. 
and you can do the intake. Some people do, some, some agencies would do the intake after the campaign starts, but I'd use the intake because it can help you organize the proposal. So go from audit, you can go then to intake on your second interaction, coordinate with your account manager or anybody on your side that's handling the marketing or can do the research. Then on your third step or third interaction, which should be your last, is the proposal. That's typically what a good short pitch looks like. So the first one, audit. Prove value first. Show them what you know. It's a little bit of expertise. On the intake, now it becomes really, it compounds. So it's, it's really about them. So it's all about asking all the leading questions that goes into the proposal. Because once you get to the proposal stage, you've audited them. You have all the information about what their needs are and where they're headed. You've built a strategy against it. You know what you're going to service them with. So go for the pitch. And there. That's typically what a short pitch looks like. My, my uh, just a bit, a bit more flavor into it, I think, and it really depends on uh, what's your background and what, who are you pitching for, of course, is um, preparation is step zero. It's really understanding their business, understanding, doing your research. You don't just go and wing it. Or even with the audit, you don't just go and be like, okay, look at that. Your website sucks. Right? You, you study the lingo, the, the competition. If you talk about their business and mention the competition on the fly, they see that you understand the industry. Yeah. Um, so it's really studying them, understanding them before, and doing the before and after state. So there's a before a state and an after state. Why are they even talking to you? Because they're in the before state and they have a desired after state. Once you realize what they're after uh, state, and you can show them that your services are the services that will get them there. You consolidate that. You don't come from the point of, I want to sell. You come from the point of, you uh, need help and I can help you. So I think a good pitch is really a pitch that understands the business. And again, mm -hmm. we talked about uh, putting the investment in and invest in investment is not necessarily in funds. It's you studying the business, studying the industry. And this is why it's easier to focus on a niche because when you talk about the niche again and again, you start understanding the lingo, you understand right. the competition, you understand what works, what doesn't work. You can start dishing examples of how you did for others. So really understanding uh, the niche uh, would help. And then put it uh, with what Will just described. That would be a good pitch, uh, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, more questions about the recordings, they will be sent. Uh, we're, we're being asked if we can help uh, agencies in, and people in, in, in Asia. Our services are very much uh, US-based. Um, when it goes to local uh, SEO, and goes, goes to citations, directories, um, we have hundreds in the US. Um, content writing, just understanding the business uh, best would be mainly US. We do have uh, partners Percent US, twenty percent or twenty percent Australia, Australia. UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's our main um, main uh, clientele. Uh, free dashboards. Is there on a boarding call with account manager? Come with any uh, paid plans? So the paid plans are just to give you access to all the tools. Um, we have when we have the time, and we usually have the time. We'll talk to anybody. Um, of course, we have to respect your time and you have to respect our time. Um, we'll just scope and see whether we are the right solution for you and give you the pointers like we did now. I mean, what we talked about is not rocket science. It uh, might, might, we might introduce a few ideas to you guys just because we're talking that daily. So continuing this conversation is possible. The paid tools will give you all the, the lead, lead finder, the CRM, marketing automation, the rank tracking, reputation management. So this, in this way, you can already go to a client and start showing them you know, the audit. You can sh start showing them a proposal. You can start tracking and exporting reports for them. Right. Do it yourself. It's the DIY version. Done for you is, uh, you can pay the 99 just to have those extra tools. Done for you is, hey, I have a client and I need your services. So now let's talk. And then it goes into, ideally you resell our services. <clears throat> if you already have a base of 20, 30 clients and you have a specific um, fulfillment that you do for them and you say, you know what, I'm tired of doing it myself, tired of doing it with freelancers, it's not consistent, delivery, the quality, um, or I wanna you know, uh, downsize a bit uh, onshore, I wanna offshore it, so that's, that's also a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have another question. How often should reports be sent to clients? Um, Will? Yeah, from our side, uh, especially when you're starting off with a campaign, you would definitely have to set it for every month, end of month. 
Um, but there are different reports too. So we, I know we talked about the executive uh, report that you sent at the end of the month, but there might be instances where an SEO or even the client might bring up uh, an opportunity that you guys will tackle. Once you're complete with that task, create the report as well. But in the initial six months, you'll have that type of frequency, uh, especially when the campaign's up and running. The more touch points that you have, the more that you're reporting on the progress and the performance, uh, allows you to solidify the campaign more and more. Eventually, uh, it'll ease up. Your own clients will start to say, hey, look, uh, maybe you can just send it to me every quarter. Yeah. I know I have the dashboard anyways on your side. Or I'm looking at reports. Just send them over and we should be good. So it'll reach that's, that's the great part when they're like, stop harassing me. I got it. You're working. You're doing your stuff. Um, I understand. Uh, I'd say be careful with over reporting on the beginning i mean touch points are important quality touch points, touch right. points in the beginning when you over report they'll start expecting the report every week they'll, they'll expect that conversation every week um whatever tone you set in the beginning is the tone that they'll expect later on so you have to decide what you're able to do and what you're not able to do um do you recommend giving discounts to client and how much is too much a very good question um because sometimes it can be too much I think if it's not limited, if it's not being, uh, uh, the expectations is, is not set. If you're mm -hmm. really, you know, when the pandemic hit, we had a dip in revenue like a lot of um, other businesses. And we said, you know what, uh, let's give some major discounts just to uh, get the ball rolling. It was the, the, the mission was uh, cash flow over profit. Cash flow right. over profit. We have 200 people in-house. We have more people outside helping us. Um, cash flow over profit, but then you have to limit it. So you say, okay, for the next three months, you know, for your first three months, you get a serious discount. And then we go back to a minor discount, especially if you're beginning, you need to prioritize cash flow over profit yeah. just to get blood stream, right? It's just to show it's a proof of concept. Don't try and become, you know, sometimes you think about how much would I quote that client and you say, oh, well, well, they, they have a budget, maybe I'll mm -hmm. exploit it a bit and maybe I'll raise it and raise it. The more you raise it, the higher the expectations. And you say, but I'm just starting and I need that cash flow. And I say, no, the contrary. So you put your head down and you give them a nice discount and that will be the client that will be with you for years. Mm -hmm. And we, we, you will always remember your path together when you have those other big clients and you'll always kind of uh, uh, curse back and be like, why did I give them that large discount? <laughs> this is actually when you move yeah. from a starter to a specialized into enterprise, you're like, oh, we have those clients that we don't make any money off. Yes, but these clients gave you the proof of concept. Right. These guys gave you the cash flow. These guys boosted you forward. If you did a good job, this guy, uh, these guys referred uh, another business, a friend. Um, you know, uh, so I think this. I think it needs to be limited. I think don't worry about giving too much discount, but don't do too much of it. You know. Like, and if you do budgets correctly, you, you can even quantify how much, how much exactly yeah, you can give, you should give, yeah. like you do your, uh, your profit margins versus retention versus your growth trajectory. And you say, okay, if I give those discounts in a way, your discounts are your marketing budget. Yep. Instead of paying them in marketing you say, okay, the market price point SEO campaign might be one five. I'm going to give it to you for seven fifty. And just means that you don't need to spend 750 on marketing because that person will be your marketing. Um, they'll give you a testimonial. They'll refer mm -hmm. friends. Um, but I say, yeah, limit it. Say for the first year, right? If you're lucky, you're in business a year from now. And then, you know, it kicks into a higher gear. If they're with you still a year from now, they're happy. It'll be okay right. to escalate. So there's no one precise answer, of course, but those are a few of the points. Um, we have, um, do we offer virtual assistants? Mm, I, we won't call them virtual assistants. We do have arrangements with our larger agencies where they have account managers with us. Mm -hmm. What's the difference uh, with an account manager with us versus a virtual assistant? First of all, account managers with us will be more expensive because virtual assistants would be someone um, that this is their livelihood. They don't have a crazy overhead and they just get, you know, money through PayPal or where it is, they're happy, you're happy. With us, an account manager is someone that gets our training, um, gets to sit with our operations, knows the processes, have access to our tools, not the tools you see, they're the back end. We call yeah. it Compass because you know, it shows us a 
where's the north? It points us in the right direction. Right. And this is the tool that helps us uh, manage uh, thousands of campaigns. So those guys are tapped to that. And when your clients are calling, they know exactly uh, how to solve their pain point. They know exactly who to run in the operation to fix something. This is not just a, you know, buy a link or buy. A lot of people are slinging, you know, cheap packages or we actually do a lot of work around the campaign. So having an account manager uh, in-house with us that can help, actually help you work, this is where you have to say, okay, I can spend X on a virtual assistant, but an account manager can help me manage my current clients so I can go and sell other clients. This is the math. And yep. this is the blind spot, um, and it's really case to case, but once I let go of that and I spent a bit more, but that person is really helping me, and this is up to you to quantify how much they're helping you, um, you're free to do what got you to that point to begin with. You were selling, 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 and then you manage, manage, manage. So even you manage, 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 you don't sell, sell, sell anymore. So you have right. to, yeah, just step up. Um, discuss the process to use and create, execute paid ad campaigns. That's a totally different webinar that goes into, you know, subject matter experts. Um, I'm, I'm okay with Google AdWords, um, but I'm, I can't really um, explain it to use, create and execute a paid. I think just the, the gist of it, it's like any other thing. It's the intake, it's understanding the business, it's creating a few ad groups, it's uh, adding negative keywords, testing what works, what doesn't work, and then in the beginning, week over week, later on, month over month, um, checking that things are, are, are on the right uh, point, cost per click, uh, conversions are fine, and uh, building landing pages if needed, and then reporting, of course, which is very important to, to clinch that month with reporting. Yep. Do we offer Facebook and LinkedIn? Uh, Facebook we offer, Google AdWords we offer, and uh, LinkedIn we do offer, right, Will? Uh, Instagram, it's, it's, it's part, like. Instagram is part of Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn, it, it's a case-to-case -case case base for the not, campaigns too. not lasting much, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's the thing. Every time a client will come, hey, do a LinkedIn thing. It's very specialized, it's very specific, and very, um, you know, sometimes very hard to bring the results while AdWords is always uh, proliferating, and Facebook, if it's the right business, would give that. So we try to really be on a, on a, on a groove that makes sense to 8% of the SMEs and mm -hmm. be very good at that. So uh, that's, that's for that. Uh, wow, we are... One hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> right. Time flew. Um, I think we covered most of the questions. Some are um, similar. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty much covered. I really want to thank you guys for your time. Um, we will send recordings. We'll make it uh, public. Will, I want to thank you for your time. I know you're still at the office. I'm at home. Uh, now it's 11.20 p.m., on our side, here right? In Manila, Philippines. Uh, so good luck to everybody. Whatever we can do to help, we'll help. Um, and um, we're out there for you. Uh, we've been doing it for almost a decade. And um, it's not a walk in the park. But if it was a work, walk in the park, everybody would you know, do it and be successful. So good luck, everybody. Exactly. And uh, good night. Good morning to you guys. Uh, yeah, some of you guys are starting your day, so. Yeah, uh, go grind, go <laughs> hustle. <laughs> bye, guys. Thank you so bye much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ellie. Thank Thanks, Ellie.